There is a place that is spoken about only in whispers. A dark area that spawns the beginnings of urban legends. A place where anything can happen and usually does. During the light of day, it hides just outside of you. But when the sun goes down, spirits, creatures of the night, roam free. And things do go bump in the night. It is in every state and every country. And there is no escaping it. No matter how safe you feel behind your locked doors and latched windows. So we invite you to turn down the lights and turn up your radio while we join Dave Schrader and Tim Dennis, your hosts, on a journey into the darkness on the edge of town. Good evening and welcome to another edition of the Darkness on the Edge of Town Paranormal Radio Show. I'm your host, Dave Schrader, along with me, my co-host and producer, Tim Dennis. Uh, D. That's him. Uh, we've got a great show for you this evening. We've got medium and psychic Karen Reese. Karen has appeared on uh, TV with James Von Prague with Possessed Possessions. She's uh, in the midst of working on a book. She's got another show coming out. We're going to be talking about uh, the psychic world and mediumship and uh, also discuss a little bit uh, about what she has coming up in the future. And we'll also be able to take two calls, I think, tonight to squeeze in one or two readings if we can. Before we get started with Karen Reese, our first guest, with us right now on the line, we have Chris Peterson from the Utah Ghost Hunters Society. Good evening, Chris. Hi, how are you? Doing great. How about yourself? Just great. Great. Now, I wanted to uh, talk to you real quickly on the air here because you've got a conference coming up. And yeah, I'd like you to give the listeners a little information about the conference and uh, tell them what they can expect and what's going on with it. Okay. What's happening is uh, about a couple of times a year we have uh, conventions. And this one is going to be happening in, uh, in our uh, own hometown, Salt Lake City. This is going to be happening at the Peary Hotel. Okay, now the Peary Hotel is a really nice hotel. It's a four-star hotel. And uh, they're going to be giving us rooms for uh, just $75 a night. That is a really excellent price for that hotel. Okay. And uh, what, uh, what you'll need to do if you're interested, by the way, in attending the convention is just go ahead and write to me at uh, mrman320 at aol.com and I'll field all of, all of your questions. Now what we're doing is uh, every year um, we bring um, the kind of the, the newest uh, thought in uh, ghost hunting, um, EVP, uh, ghost photography, and uh, that, uh, that sort of thing to our conventions. This year we're taking kind of a new twist to the convention and we're extending it beyond ghost hunting into some of the other um, fields of paranormal study. We're having a gentleman that, uh, that we refer to in this area as Alien Dave. This is Dave um, from, he's with, he's with a local MUFON group with uh, Utah UFO Hunters Okay, is, is his group. He's also going to be speaking to us. We have two gentlemen, um, uh, Rich Oliver and Matt, oh boy, <laughs> <laughs> Matt uh, Groen, I believe is how you pronounce his last name, is, uh, they're going to be speaking to us uh, about uh, their experiences at the Utah UFO Ranch, which is also known as the Skinwalker Ranch. Well, isn't there a book about that that just came out? Yeah, there's a book called Hunt for the Skinwalker Okay. that um, is a very spooky book. If you ever get a chance to pick this book up, it'll give you the chills. Great. And who's the author on that, did you say? Um, the author... Can't recall. <laughs> That's fine. But it's, uh, but it's going to be talking about that same Skinwalker Ranch. Right. They uh, they stayed... Now, you you really can't go out to the ranch itself. It's uh, it's closed to the public. But they stayed in the in the area. And they had some really uh, strange experiences, like lost time. They had um, some really peculiar uh, paranormal experiences. They um, they had um, just some really profound events occur out there. They're going to be there to talk to us about that. Um, Nancy and I, my wife Nancy, and I are going to do uh, classes on collecting electronic voice phenomenon. We have Dr. Alan Meyer who's going to be speaking to us about uh, ghost photography. 
Um, April Greenwald is going to speak to us about her ongoing investigation uh, into the Lehigh Hospital. And uh, we also have a ghost hunt that we're going to try to put together, which I'm not really going to say anything further about because it's still pending. Okay. But uh, we're hoping to get something special put together for uh, for the investigation. Sure. Now, when is uh, when is this conference going to take place? This is going to take place May 12th and 13th. And what would the cost be for the people that are listening? Um, to attend the conference is just a fee of fifty dollars per person. That covers the two days of the the conference, and the each. Um, people that uh, that are attending the conference need to make their own reservations at the period. All right. Now, uh, is there a website set up for this conference, or just contact you through your email? Just uh, contact us through our email. Okay. Uh, and right what? now, but we will have on the Utah Ghost Hunters website. We will have uh, information posted. Why don't you give that website address so people can check it out? Okay, we're at www.ghostwave.com. That's g h o s t w a v e. Com. Great. Well, Chris, we appreciate your time, and if they want to email you in the interim, they can email you at? That's Mr. Man, M-A-R-M-A-N, 320, dot, or at, excuse me, at AOL.com. All right. Well, that was Chris Peterson from the Utah Ghost Hunter Society. He's talking to us about his conference coming up. And if you want more information, you can check them out at ghostwave.com, which is the Utah Ghost Hunter Society webpage, uh, or you can email him at the address. Now we're going to go with our guests that we have this evening, and I'd like to welcome her, Karen Reese. Are you with us? I sure am. Well, thank you for joining us, Karen. Well, thank you for having me. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction, you're a medium and a psychic, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, can you give me a definition? I know we've had other people on. What, sure. what is a different definition for you of, of what the two different aspects of this are? Um, the easiest way to describe it, I mean, I've been seeing dead people since I was two and making predictions since I've been about three, thereabouts in age, but mediums see dead people. Mediums would be equivalent to like a university degree, whereas psychics, um, you know, past, present, and future, and think of that maybe more like a high school level. And all mediums are psychics, not all psychics are mediums. And there's a big difference in that. So anytime somebody says they're a medium, they're automatically a psychic. Okay. And <laughs> If that makes any, you know. For sure. You might be able to, to uh, psychic power is giving you maybe ESP and, and being able to tell some things that have happened here and there, but not necessarily allow you to contact the dead. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Now, do you speak with the dead um, that, oh, yeah. that, that are on the other side, or do you speak with the dead that are still earthbound, or do you speak to both? Both, both, and I'll tell you. How much is that calling plan? <laughs> 4 99 a minute. <laughs> funny you should say that. Talk about synchronicity. I'll tell you about that later. No, okay. That's funny you should say that. That's actually my book. See, you're psychic right now. I might as well mention it in my book. I talk about my own friends and family calling plan. It's really in the book. Funny. <laughs> Good now thinking. You, yep. Now, you, uh, you have a book coming out. Mm -hmm. And what's the name of your book? It's called The Lighter Side of the Other Side, Funny Stories from a Psychic Medium. Fantastic. Yeah, you know, this uh, industry, you know, there's a lot of uh, seriousness to this. I do psychic detective work. I, um, you know, and as a medium, I see a lot of, you know, situations. But uh, I also seem to think that we shouldn't forget about having, you know, a lighthearted um, approach to life. Oh, definitely. You know, shall we find our smiles? And people that have listened to our show know that we take that uh, approach as well. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now, I have a question for you. You said that you, you do uh, psychic detect detective work as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, they have that psychic detective show, and, and you've seen them on, um, you know, every movie, Under the Sun, and they always give the same kind of innocuous, oh, there's a field and, and running water and a, a windmill somewhere nearby. I mean, do you, are you getting more information? And, I mean, how many cases have you helped on? Do you, do you help the police with those types of matters, or do you do different type of um, psychic detective work? I do. I get pretty specific information. One of the things in any of my readings I'm known for are, um, you know, names, numbers, pretty specific stuff. You know, I always tell people, though, keep in mind, you know, with what you're working with, um, regardless of how you get it. I mean, if it if, if fits, if, you know, it is what it is. So even if you get innocuous or nebulous information, you know, if it still sort of makes sense, there's something that the psychic's picking up. Um, I just happen to get a lot of names. It's one of my fortes, um, as well as numbers, probably because I worked as a stockbroker many, many years ago. So, 
All right. Have you have you had a lot of success being a uh, a psychic detective and helping people find uh, or helping the police find missing people or or murdered bodies, things like that? Yes, and you know I'll tell you a really quick funny story. I don't know if I had mentioned this to you previously, but I recently worked on something which is still pending, so I can't elaborate too much in detail. But I had given the address of um, where the perpetrators had taken this particular victim to, and in my world, there's nothing coincidental it's all synchronistic and about a week later i was thinking about this whole situation what have you and south park was on television and my husband came in and goes oh you know cartman's playing uh, psychic detective so i walked in and as i'm walking in i see uh, cartman walking up to a house with the exact same address that i had given previously in a reading uh regarding a uh, you know a criminal activity so i thought that's my confirmation right there but nothing synchronistic so it's pretty funny wow so maybe matt stone and trey parker are psychic too huh? <laughs> that or maybe the other person's giving more communication you know confirmation <laughs> you know so that is true now with the uh when you're able to help them is it the spirit of the deceased that's telling you where they are yeah. Is it just a feeling that you're getting from the force or, or whatever you're tapping into out there? Um, I actually see, hear, and feel people on the other side. Okay. Um, oftentimes when I'm doing my readings, even though I get a lot of psychic information, a lot of times loved ones uh, will come in, and what they'll do is they'll read a person's aura if I'm reading for that particular person or if it's in a case where um, there's something criminal involved, then if the person's crossed over or whatever, then they'll come in and they'll provide me with information directly, you know, this happened to me, and I'll ask for verification. It's one thing when I read people, I typically will ask for verification. A lot of times people will get really caught up in the moment, and it might not make sense to them right away, and I'll, you know, I'll ask for something, you know, verifying um, something so that at some point either what they get, it'll register to them or, um, you know, it will make sense at some point in the reading. Now, with the readings that you do, are you getting visualizations? Are the, are the spirits actually, do, do they appear there in front of you? Are you dealing with your spirit guides? Um, are you seeing just pictures and flashes, like flashcards in your brain telling you the, the different signs? Or um, You know, I'll tell you what, in my case, typically speaking, because I see here and feel, a person's loved one will come around them. I'll see them. Sometimes they come very strong as if I were sitting directly across from them. Sometimes they'll come in shadowy or they'll, you know, flash their face. And meanwhile, they'll give me, like, my own little television. So I'll look at my TV, and then I'll look back up to them, and then they'll start to give me whatever information. So I get, like, my own little movie. And much like a radio station, you know, I can hear, you know, their messages. Um, not necessarily always as clear, but, you know, depending on the connection, again, it's all frequency-based, and that just leads me to another point. I should just point out, most people don't realize, but your spirit body is a frequency and, um, you know, operates much the same. You know, that's why psychically, you know, I can tune into the other side. My frequency goes out to their transmitter, receiver, and vice versa. So that's how psychic information is transmitted. Do you ever, while, while you're dealing with people, I've always wondered this with people that have your, your unique type of gifts, have you ever started to do a reading for somebody and you get like the Hollywood effect where you realize this guy's a pedophile or, or has murdered somebody? Or? Yeah. I've read a lot of people and I have seen some really strange things, very strange things, in fact. Um, don't tell them about our reading. That's a secret. <laughs> the fact that I like to dress up as a clown in a maid costume is between you and me. That's in the book, too, Dave. You're so psychic. <laughs> um, yeah, I've, I've had some very strange readings. Very, very strange. So, you know, you just go with the flow. And, you know, the thing I typically do, I'm very spiritual, so I always try to pray and say, please bring me, you know, the highest and best. But, you know, you, you get all walks of life. Well, do you, if you were doing a reading for, say, you know, Tim walked in and you started to do a reading and realized that he was a pedophile, would you then contact the, the nice. well, I'm not meaning that you, <laughs> but I'm just, you know, as an example, would you then contact the, the, the authorities and say, I think there's a, uh, you might want to check into this guy, or, or I think he murdered somebody? I mean, is that something that you can do, or? You know, that really calls into question code of ethics. It calls into questions, um, you know, from my personal view, if I have something, um, scary like that, I'd rather side on the, uh, or err on the side of um, trying to do something right. Um, and in that particular case, yeah, I would. Okay. You know, if I see something, and I have seen some very strange things, so, um, you know, I'd rather side on the safety, you know, if it means preventing somebody from being harmed, especially, you know, a little person, I have a real hard time with that. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. 
Now, with doing the readings, and, and how long have you said you, you started doing this when you were about two or three, you were able to start communicating with the dead and start seeing or, or making predictions? Mm -hmm. When I was about two years old, I used to have a visitor that would come and visit me, an older woman, and then as time progressed, I would see things, know things, feel things. It runs in my mom's side of the family, and when I was about seven years old, I predicted my dad's death, and he dropped dead two weeks later of a stroke. He was 52. He had just gone for a physical. He was in great shape. My brother, who's 11 months younger, same thing. He had, he had the exact same um, vision. And, uh, you know, fortunately for us, we had our grandmother who informed us, you know, this is just God's way of, um, you know, giving you some heads up, and this is just something that's part of human nature, part of our family. Um, you know, it was. An, I was not really aware of being so different. My mom never said, oh, you kids are a little bit different, because she would tell us, oh, yeah, I saw three monks. Oh, yeah, I knew this was going to happen. Oh, yeah, that's going to happen, as if it was nothing, but it wasn't until that awakening. And strangely enough, a lot of psychics do have an awakening right around the age of seven, six and seven. And if you look at the number seven, it's one of the most spiritual numbers out there. So, you know, everything has a connection. Sure. With, with doing what you do, can you turn it on and off, or do spirits harass you in the middle of the night and wake you up from sleep and oh. want to talk? Or? Oh, yeah, I've had that happen. You know, you turn it on, you turn it off. For some strange reason, a lot of times people are under the uh, misconception that psychics are always on, you know, tell me what this or that. And I tell people, no, you know, we're really much like a radio that runs off battery. You know, if you kept it on all the time, you would totally uh, run out of battery power. Um, in my instances, in any other psychic, you turn it on, you turn it off. But there are many times, especially at night, where I've been awakened or I've seen things. Um, you know, people from the other side, you know, they get excited. They've got a loved one coming in the next day or what have you. I'm out of body. I'm going to a different dimension. You know, I run across people. So I get all sorts of interruptions. Now you say go to another dimension. Are you astral projecting or? Oh, yeah, I go out of body. Oh, yeah, I like to take little vacations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, yep. with astral projection, see, that's something that really interests me. I mean, is that part of, of your psychic ability? Does that allow you to, to, to speak with the spirits doing that? Or is that just something you do as a lark? I mean, is it a, a temporary <laughs> well, I, vacation or what? I want to go get a good sale on shoes, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, it, it's something that we all do. I'm just more cognizant of it. We do it, you think you're dreaming, you think you're somewhere, you know, blah, 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 blah. Oftentimes you're in another dimension, usually the next dimension over, which is similar to this dimension, and in your frame of reference, you relate to that environment very similar to this particular dimension. But you might wake up saying, geez, you know, Sonny, you know, I was dreaming last night that I had a pond in my backyard. It looked like my backyard, but I really don't have a pond. Well, you've actually been out of body. In my particular instance, since I was a kid, I'd fly up to the ceiling, go towards the window, um, and a lot of people do that when they're children, and then as you age, you become more grounded into the physical. So oftentimes, you know, we don't really uh, become as cognizant or aware on a conscious level when we leave our bodies. So, yeah, you're doing it, too. You're flying those friendly skies like me. I fly a lot, yeah, in my, in my <laughs> dreams. Now, that, that, you know, kind of brings up another strange question. We'll lead down this road, if you don't mind. With astral projection and, and your mentioning of going to another dimension, I have dreams... Uh, you know, I'm sure we all do. Where sometimes you're you're the participant looking through your own eyes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're watching yourself, almost like on a movie screen. Mm -hmm. I've had dreams where I'm doing what I'm doing, and I'll look in the mirror, and it's not me, but I know it's me. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So is that the alternate version, Dave, over there? Yep, your consciousness is projecting you in a way, for whatever reason, that you're understanding the situation in that particular framework. Um, I personally feel that we're pure consciousness, and I'll give you an example. Six months ago, I was out of body, and when I went up out of my body, it was literally hovering maybe about eight feet above my body towards the ceiling. I had no body. I was a big, giant bobblehead. I was actually an orb. That's what orbs are, spiritual streams of consciousness. And then at some level, we can project you know, our bodies and what have you, both here as well as in the spirit world, more so in the spirit world. Um, but again, it goes back to the point of our consciousness projecting in a frame of reference in which we understand our pure core essence, I believe, is pretty much an orb. So it, when you're having those strange dreams and you're projecting yourself in a particular uh, look or, you know, you look different or something to that effect, the environment's different, there's something a little bit deeper that you're doing and a reason why. Is that uh, most likely when I can control my dreams like that, does that mean that there's probably a better chance that I am asked for projecting and not just having some kind of freaky dream where I can control myself and control what's going on around me? That, and it also means, too, that you're having a lucid dream. You're just aware of what you're doing. 
Okay, so it is a it is a dream, or it's or an astral projection. Astral do you think? projection, definitely. Okay, and you're aware of what you're doing. I mean, they call it lucid dreaming, but you know, more often than not, you're out of body. Oh yeah, and the next one over is definitely the next dimension. I mean, I've gone to all sorts of dimensions, and people say, "Aren't you frightened when you go out of body?" And I said, "Absolutely not. I've gone to lower dimensions, and I did that not too long ago. Actually, it's pretty funny, but." If you bump into me in one of those dimensions that I have here, make sure to tell me to, t to do everything I can to keep it, would you? No problem. Tim's nodding his head. He wants you to tell him that same thing. For the team, guys, no That's problem. Right. Now, now, the longer uh, people are dead, are they, are they, is it harder for them to come through to you? Is that maybe the shadowy or staticky no. ones that come through? No, it's just a frequency transmission receiver, you know. Um, I'll see them, so you'll usually blink their face. Sometimes they come through crystal clear. Sometimes, you know, I still see them, but they may not be as clear. You know, I'd have to, you know, I'll tell them, give me a close-up or, you know, come in a little bit stronger or hold your, your um, being so I can see a little bit stronger. But I'll give you a funny example. I was doing um, a reading last week, and I was actually at somebody's house doing a big reading party type of thing. And I was sitting there talking to this gentleman, first few minutes and I said oh by the way George is behind you I've got George with you this older gentleman George and he said I don't know George and I said well George is standing behind you just then I watched George walk over to the door which was flat against the wall and close the door where it locked the poor gentleman looked at me ghost white he's like did you see that did you see that he was panicking I thought it was pretty funny to tell you the <laughs> truth you know all right so afterwards I was talking to the owner and she says it's so funny she goes I guess Jim heard about George and I said yes and she said that's weird because this house was owned once by an older gentleman named George we always hear noises and every time we hear something we always say oh it's George again and I said well that was George who came in in fact I saw him you know standing behind your friend and then he walked to the door and then he closed it and it, you know he did a 180 or whatever 90 degree close with it it was funny hmm. so you know I've gone places where I've had people in my car driving with me uh, now, does that ever spook you? Do you ever, you're driving all of a sudden, you turn around and there's somebody there. Does it ever give you a start? No, no. You know, and I've met some gnarly um, beings, if you want to call it, that I've gone out of body and I've gone to some strange places. But one thing that my grandmother told me many, many years ago, you know, I have enough faith in God and I don't live in fear. And I just say, you know, I surround myself with God's white light. You need to leave now. And, you know, anything spooky typically will leave, you know. Do, when you're doing the readings, do do evil things come through? Do evil entities or malevolent uh, spirits, if you will, come through that are trying to muck with you, and I understand that you can fend them off and that you've got a strong faith in God, but do they still try to get through and screw with you because of what you're doing to help people? No, not at all. You know, I always open up with a prayer, and even beforehand, and I put my intention out. So, like, my radar is always saying, you know, only the highest and best. You know, if you go looking for trouble, whether it's on this plane or the other plane, you can find it. Um, you know, so I'm fortunate, you know, I have good guides, they protect me and, you know, they keep the trouble away. And again, you know, if there's ever a uncomfortable issue, I mean, that's easy to take care of. It's easy to render, you know, if sure. you live in fear, you give up your power, so to speak, if you want to call it that. And I personally feel that most fear based or negative situations, um, you just got to realize what they are. They're just very, um, unlearned individuals, whether they're on this side or that side. Well, maybe you could you could shed some light on this for us, uh, and I'll, I'll actually let you think about this while we go to, to a commercial, but let me ask you the question up front. The question is, a lot of people bring up the fact that um, possession and uh, inviting evil spirits in is done through things like automatic writing, Ouija board, tarot cards, doing medium readings. And I'd like, uh, we're, we're going to go to commercial, but when we come back, I'd like to discuss with you a little bit more about that. And... I hear where you're coming from, from the lighter side, and that you surround yourself in the light, but I'd, I'd like your take on how you address that to people when they ask you about that themselves. Uh, you're listening to the Darkness on the Edge of Town radio show. This is your host, Dave Schrader. Our guest this evening, Karen Reese. She's a psychic medium, and you've seen her on TV with Possessed Possessions with James Von Prague, and she has another show called X Ops, which will be coming out soon. We'll talk more with Karen right after this. Once you have seen Dave and Tim in the light, you'll understand why we must return to the darkness on the edge of town. Stay tuned. There is more to come. This is Dave Schrader from the Darkness on the Edge of Town radio show. Each week, we delve into the web of the unknown and deal with a lot of scary subjects. But nothing makes my blood run colder or scares me more than dealing with technology. That's why we turn to the experts when we wanted our website for the show set up and maintained. In the studio with me is Don Raleigh, owner of Evolve Systems. Don and his exceptional staff were easy to work with and made setting up our site a breeze. Don, what is it that sets you apart from other web developers? Well, Dave, we make your business visions come to life by creating, maintaining, and hosting all of your internet needs. We do this by 
listening to our clients. We offer programs and price plans to fit any budget. And Dave, I mean any budget. Call us at 651-628-4000 and put us to work for you. Call Don at Evolve Systems, 651-628-4000. I did and I couldn't be happier with the results. That's because we take the ugh out of technology, Dave. Call us today at 651-628-4000 or visit us on the web at www.evolve-systems.com. Serving the entire United States. That's Evolve Systems, helping you to manage change. Cheers. Jeff Rusterholtz with Edina Realty understands that the housing market is changing and he's prepared to work with you to put together an aggressive plan to ready your home and help you sell quickly. It's Jeff's goal as your full-service real estate agent specializing in the Twin Cities to provide you with superior service at all times. His local expertise and extensive real estate experience will benefit you whether you're serious about buying or selling a home. By taking time to really listen to your needs and desires, Jeff Rusterholtz with Adina Realty will help you find the home of your dreams. And if you're selling a home, his real estate expertise and many effective marketing programs will give you the exposure and edge you need to sell your home quickly and for top dollar. Jeff prides himself on providing unparalleled service and he looks forward to developing a long-term relationship with you. Visit him online at movewithjeff.com for more details or call 651-690-8479 to get started on securing your future. That number again, 651-690-8479. Would you like to contact a loved one who has crossed over to the other side? Do you worry about your own health issues or those of a loved one? Are you curious about your relationships and your career? If any of these questions have crossed your mind recently, then this is an experience that you cannot miss. Come join me, Jessalyn Devereaux, on Saturday, April 1st, as I host the Meet the Psychics, Meet the Healers Day at the Minneapolis Learning Annex. Just go online today to www.professionalangel.com to register and find out more. Renew yourself with this day that's sure to inspire miracles and change your life. The day is filled with psychic readings, seminars, and spiritual healing sessions. Plus, everyone who attends will receive a free, complimentary mini reading. So go online today to www.professionalangel.com or call 651-208-6452. That's 651-208-6452. If you read Tap 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 every month, month, you'll you'll be be able to tell tell the difference difference between the absurd. Could not go to work because Bigfoot stole my car. And the creepy. Taps Paramag takes you where few would ever go on purpose. (laughs) From exclusive interviews with the cast of The Ghost Hunters, to the latest trends in technology, the field of the paranormal. To join our journey, order at tapsparamag.com. In the Amityville Horror, the ghost told them to get out the house. White people stayed in there. Now that's a hit and a half for your A ghost say get the out, I would just tip the out the door. They walked and looked in the toilet bowl with blood in the toilet. They said, that's peculiar. I would have been in the house and said, oh, baby, this is beautiful. We got a chandelier hanging up here, kids outside playing. It's a beautiful neighborhood. We ain't got nothing to wear. I really love them. This is really nice. Too bad we can't stay, baby. We're the type of guys who would have stayed just for the extra company. Welcome back to the darkness on the edge of town. Welcome back. You're listening to The Darkness on the Edge of Town radio show. We're a paranormal radio show. We're here each week, Sunday evening from 10 to midnight. And uh, this evening we've got with us a very special guest. Her name is Karen Reese. Karen is a medium and a psychic. If you have interest in contacting Karen, you can reach her at her website, which is Karen Reese, K-A-R-Y-N-R-E-E-C-E. Dot com, And there you can contact Karen for individual readings, parties, things like that. Is that correct, Karen? That's right. Okay. Uh, now, before we went to the break, I was asking you, with with a lot of the, the demonologists and, and paranormal investigators we've dealt with, they say that the way to open yourself up for trouble is by doing things like tarot card readings and Ouija board and uh, automatic writing and dealing with mediums and psychics. How do you address that? Well, you know, it goes back to where the intention all resides. You know, again, if you're looking for it, if you don't set up the intention, um, and that's done more on a spiritual basis from the beginning, yeah, you can open yourself up. I mean, there's naughty people here. There's naughty people on the other side. 
Um, you know, and I've seen some gnarly things. The thing is, in my particular instance, when I do my readings, I always put out the intention that it's for the highest and best, or, you know, that we, you know, I've got God's white light around me. So I don't have that come into my reading. It's an automatic. Um, I've gone to places or I've been around places where there's been negative energy. You know, but it's like anything else. You know, you can have negative energy here on the earth plane. You can have it on the other plane. You know, it's all a big, giant learning pool, both this way and on the other dimension. So, I don't, again, you know, I don't live in fear besides, quite frankly, you know, first thing in the morning, I'd be a little bitchy without my coffee, so everybody knows whether you're on this side or the other side. And besides, I've always said I'm going to have a hell of a time in heaven, so, (laughs) you know, I'm too bad out of shape. I'd like to go on record, too. I, something I get a lot of emails, because we've had some different psychics and mediums on, and, and we had uh, Marianne Winkowski, who is the um, inspiration for the TV show Ghost Whisperer. And one, one of the main things that uh, I get the silliest complaints about is that if you were really a medium and you were really that talented, there's no reason you should charge. And you know, for, for doing the readings. And I personally would like to just go on record, and not that I'm anybody important, but I think that's kind of ridiculous for people to say, because you have a special gift and because you can help people, you shouldn't get paid for it. I mean, we, we pay millions of dollars to hear Clay Aiken with his new album coming out and buy his album and go to, <laughs> exactly, go to concerts for um, these musicians, but they were born with this gift. And and That's comedians, a gift? well, Clay Aiken. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. well, I'd like to return it, but yeah, it's a gift. But then you've got actors, you've you've got um, people that were born with these natural born abilities, and they charge exorbitant amounts of money. And here you are with the ability to help closure. You're you're able to help people contact people that have crossed over. I understand that there is some bad side of this because there are hacks out there. Uh, and I'm sure you've run into your, your fair share of them, Karen, sure. in this field. There's a lot of hacks out there. But, I mean, it's kind of up to you to be a, uh, an intelligent consumer. Well, you know, I'll tell you, I look at money, and it's funny because when you look at my background, my spiritual path is totally different than most people. I mean, I've worked in the um, workforce. I mean, I worked as a stockbroker, youngest female stockbroker. I actually was going to go to law school and whatever. The thing that there's a couple of things going on here. First of all, to me, you know what, money is just an exchange of energy. That's really what it is core. So if I'm exchanging energy with somebody, because the type of work that I do requires a lot of energy, it looks easy to most people, and I definitely have a good time when I'm doing my readings, but it does require a lot of energy. So if I'm exchanging energy, the right thing would be for somebody to exchange it back with me, you know, back um, to me in a way that... Um, would make sense. And the only way to really do that is with money. Um, you certainly don't want to keep bleeding somebody or being a parasite off of somebody and taking and taking and taking. That's not healthy spiritually, sure. physically, mentally, emotionally. So money, it's just a spiritual exchange of energy. Um, when it comes to that particular belief system, I think it goes back to some sort of ideologies or religionistic belief system that you know, money is evil and, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's actually the love of money. Money's just a vehicle. I mean, and I appreciate money. Again, having worked as a stockbroker, I mean, I, I totally can appreciate money. Um, and then when you look at the real, you know, the game that we're playing in, you know, the framework here, we're on earth, what are the rules of this particular game? Well, the rules say that in order to eat, you have to be able to pay for your groceries. So, you know, it's factoring in, you know, what are the rules of the earth? Well, sure, it's you know? barter and trade. You, you've got exactly. something that you can actually do to help people. And, and I, I totally believe that people should be paid that are legitimate, and it's up to you as a consumer to check these people out. And usually the best way is probably word of mouth or seeing people like Karen on specials like Possessed Possessions or X-Ops, and you get the chance to see them work in their field and then talk to people. Usually they've got uh, um, testimonials on their site or they've, you know, they have people that they can refer you to to t- talk to them before you agree to pay. Um, so please do check that out. And that brings up another really good point. Um, You know, a lot of times people go in with the expectation of um, hearing something, you know, specific, or they automatically assume that we're going to know what you want to talk about or who you want to talk to. A lot of times it comes right up at the beginning, you know, oh, you're going to get married to this person, oh, your father John's here, whatever. But there are also times where, you know, you're putting out in your aura, a lot of people don't realize how psychic information really comes about. Each person has a magnetic field around them. Within that magnetic field, you have past, present, and future information, consciously and subconsciously. So psychics will take your subconscious or whatever you put out the strongest. You create your own world. We just sit back and take it. So whatever you put out the strongest, um, you know, particular frequency, we'll take it and we'll tell you, you know, this is your future prediction. At some level, you've already started to make that happen. 
for some odd reason, people sometimes think that we should be talking about what they think or expect in a reading. And I always tell people, you know, if there's something you have in mind, something that you are expecting that doesn't come through at the beginning, feel free to ask about it later on. I don't know what you want. If I did, I'd have to read your mind. Can I do it? Yes. And it does occasionally happen inadvertently, but to do it on a deliberate initiating way is a big no-no. So I also tell people, you know, you might have your Aunt Sue come in and you want to really talk to your cousin Bob, you know, from the other side. Let me know and I'll try and bring him in through voice. So it's a team cooperative effort. Great. Well, with that said, I know we had talked about before the show that you were open to do a couple of readings. Sure, we'll do a couple. On the line with us, we have Jennifer. And uh, Jennifer, make sure you've got a pen and paper handy so you can jot down uh, whatever information Karen shares with you here. And uh, keep yourself open. Uh, You might want to take a second to just take a deep breath while I'm talking. Think about who you'd like to have come through, what kind of validation or message you're looking for. Uh, By opening that conduit, I see that the mediums are able to get it a lot easier. So uh, without giving her too much information, you can do that. I'll shut up. And uh, Karen Reese, this is Jennifer. Jennifer, Karen Reese. Hey, Jen. How are you? I'm great, thank you. I can you. barely hear you, darling. Can you speak up just a little bit more? Is that better? Uh, i try one more time. Better? Uh, a little more. Um, better? Well, kind of, but you're a little kinda? bit distance, but that's okay. okay we'll I'll try and see what loud. we can do. Um, listen, I've got a uh, grandmother coming in from your mom's side, and there's a couple things that are coming up around you. First and foremost, have you recently bought a new car or made some changes to your car? Uh, yeah, I've had some work done. Yeah, she said that there were some changes and some things. She's also letting me know that there's more work to come up. Who's the Kathy to you? Or the Catherine or the Kathy? I'm sorry? Who's the Kathy to you? My stepsister. I'm sorry, say that again? Her stepsister is Kathy. Okay. Um, Because there's something coming up between the two of you regarding money. I'll just give you some heads up that way. Um, And also at some point, it's not happening now, but at some point down the road, there's going to be some sort of investment opportunity into a business, either her to you or you to her. I think she's going to be doing something relating to like her own little business, something at some point you may help to um, finance it or something to that effect. Um, Caution to that, caution to that is what I'm getting. And the other thing I was going to ask you, did you do any injury to like your hand wrist area? Um, Well, I've had some skin cancer froze and it's near my wrist. Yeah, because I keep looking at your wrist. Um, Have you gone back three times for this? No, I just had it done a couple weeks ago, and it's supposed to be rechecked in about six months. Yeah, I feel like you're going to need to go back three times. Um, Keep an eye on that. Things will work out. You've got a long life ahead of you. It's just I keep getting this all around that particular part of your body. So, Also, who's got the September, October birthday passing or anniversary around you? I'm sorry? Who's got the September, October, now I'm going, September, October, October, November. Who's got the, I go strong into October. Who's got the October, September birthday passing or anniversary around you? Is that your grandmother on your mom's side? Well, my birthday is in November. Oh, happy birthday. That's why I went to the November real quickly. But there's also something September, October to you. So it's got to be a passing around you. Um, Happy birthday to the November, by the way, from your grandmother and your mom's side. Yeah, I, I, it's my grandma, Powell. I'm sorry? I, I know it's my grandmother. I've been wondering about her a lot. Oh, you know what she's doing, reading your aura field. Hey, you've got some schooling coming up or some learning to do. She says you've got some more schooling left to do. Mm, okay. I can't hear you, hon. What's that? She I said, said okay. okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Doesn't sound too thrilling, huh, going back to school or doing more <laughs> schooling. Better you than me. I did enough of it. Yeah, but that's okay. And you should do something in the medical field, honestly. That's your spiritual path medical field really yep and they could involve counseling psychology as well any of those disciplines selling pharmaceuticals um strong connection into that goes back to a past life in which you were a healer actually you have a past life too this is kind of cool way back in the um witch burning days of salem massachusetts oh great (laughs) poor john (laughs) anyway i can barely hear you I'm sorry. I'm I'm writing stuff down. I'm not really talking. Okay, because you're very very faint. But anyways, um, long life ahead, Jen. Good things coming up. Um, and I got a marriage ring going on your finger, so that's in your world as well. Um, let me just see one other quick thing too that they're showing me Did about you. Did you a ring on my finger? Mm-hmm. Yep. That means you'll get married if you're not married right now. 
No, I'm not. And I'm actually starting a new relationship that's long distance, and I'm very concerned about it. I was going to say, who's the strong P, first or last name, connected to you romantically? I'm sorry? Who's the strong P letter, like a Paul, connected to you? I, I can't understand do you, the letter. Do you have a strong, like, uh, Paul or a P name that's very close to you that's romantically linked, either first name or last name? Mm, no. Okay, you will at a later date. Save the first name of this person you're dating, and I'll tune into his energy. Can you tell her the name of the just the first name of the person that you're interested in dating here, uh, that you're just starting oh. a long distance relationship with? His name is Ross. R O S S. Ross. Okay, let me. Yeah. She's going to try to tap into his energy for you now and give you a little insight. Um, you know what? Do you want the answer to that? Yeah. You need to work on this. Honestly, I keep feeling that he's not the one for you, that there's another bigger fish coming your way, and it feels like this person's got a strong key. So the right person eventually that you'll end up with is either a Paul. It's, it's a strong P. I keep wanting to say Paul, but it could be like a very strong P for the last name. Strong P. Maybe he just eats a lot of asparagus. <laughs> <laughs> I get a, you know, a very strong P connection. And actually, I validated my energy with Jennifer because I think you'd validated your sister, Kathy, or what have you earlier because I saw Kathy close to you. But anyways, um, just so you know, there's a good book, by the way. I always advocate this to everybody. It's called Are You the One for Me by Barbara DeAngelis. You should definitely get it great book. What book is that? Um, it's called Are You the One for Me by Barbara DeAngelis. Are You the One for Me by Barbara DeAngelis. Who's the Aries? Is Ross an Aries March, April? He's in, his birthday's in May. No, this guy's in March, April. Aries energy that you'll connect into. So, Or you'll meet him during a March, April connection. So you've got some good things to look forward to, and actually you'll get a big diamond out of it. I shouldn't say that, but you will, Jen, and it's, that's cool. Diamond or cubic zirconia? <laughs> the spirits being... Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Excellent. Yes. All right, is there any parting uh, words from Grandma here, and we'll uh, let Jen get going? Um, watch on this uh, wrist hand area. Make sure you stay on top of that. And also, if you're doing anything like rollerblading or biking, because that seems to be coming up around you, be very careful into that. Okay. Okay. You'll be fine. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for being a part of the show this evening, Jen. Appreciate mm -hmm. you being here. Now, let's go real quickly um, and mention, Karen, you said uh, you've got a show called X Ops coming mm -hmm. up. Uh, is that on the, the Discovery Channel? Yep, it's on the Discovery Channel. That should be out within the next few weeks. They haven't given us an exact date, but it's coming out. That should be pretty exciting, by the way. What is it about? It's about aliens, and yes, I've seen them. Um, and we actually... Um, we see them over at Denny's all the time. We work in the, the back, I think. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm near the Canadian border, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We get the Canadian and the American aliens. Yeah, but uh, my cousin's on the other side of the river. But anyways, um, <laughs> quite interesting. You know, a lot of people don't realize that aliens can come in two forms, both in the physical as well as in the ethereal or spiritual uh, form, too. So oftentimes when people are abducted, it's not necessarily always the physical that's being abducted. Sometimes it's just their, you know, spiritual selves, too. So kind of cool stuff. And, you know, it's quite interesting, too, because you get into the different dimensions and uh, a lot of things that are now starting to be revealed about all the different strange things that we've always suspected but have been refrained you know from our government or what have you from learning okay and that's what you cover in the show x ops so if you have uh, cable a lot of the cable companies will let you look up the shows in advance make sure you get that it's x dash ops is that correct yes yep it's a team of experts and uh it's kind of cool it's and there's very hip there's information on your website right at karen mm -hmm. yep and that's k-a-r-y-n-r-e-e-c-e.com uh, Karen, if we can, we've got one other gal on hold here who'd really love the chance to talk to you and, and get a little reading. We've got about uh, 10 minutes here for the rest of the show. Um, her name is Ginger. Ginger, are you on the line with us? I am. Okay, Ginger. Hi, Ginger. Hello, um, how are y'all? I can barely hear you, so if I'm screaming out your way, I do apologize. Did you just get a new animal? Um, no. No, oh, you got a little fuzzy coming up around you. Okay. And it's not a boyfriend in this case. It's truly an animal, so you're good on that one. Um, Ginger, can you just speak up a little bit more because I can barely hear you. Okay. 
Um, I want to ask you a quick question. Are your eyes bothering you? Um, not that I've noticed. Keep an eye on your eyes. That or you're due for an eye exam? Because I keep getting up around the eye exam. And what's the color green? Are you in a green room? I keep getting green around you. Do you um, wear a lot of green? I'm sitting on a green couch. You're sitting on green? Mm -hmm. She's oh. sitting on a green couch. Yeah, yeah, get that with you. Actually, it's your grandfather coming in from your dad's side. Who's a Robert or a Bob to you? Is it your dad or your grandfather? Um, what was the name? Robert or Bob. It's an R O B. It looks like a Robert or a Bob. Who's this? Um, I do know a Robert. Yes. Say that again, hon. I do. Yeah, I, she does know a Robert. Okay, and are you good chums with him? Um, it was my grandmother's boyfriend. In spirit? Yes. He's here. It's, I took him as a grandfather then. Okay, yeah. Grandpa Robert's here. Oh, okay. Yeah, and he's bringing him in a big bouquet of flowers. Who's got the April, May birthday passing or anniversary around you? Are you the April, May? Um, no, I am not. Um, Who's, is it your grandmother that's got the April, May connection? Not that I know of. Write this down, because if it doesn't make sense, it's usually a birthday passing or anniversary, and Grandpa boyfriend Robert's giving me the... April May connection, so it might check to see if it was his birthday or passing because he's making me. It's close right in that field coming up around you. Also, there's something coming up regarding your career. It looks like you're going to be going, you're either at a point or just coming up to the point where do I go this way or do I go that way? Do I go this way? Do I go that way? And were you thinking about going into something with a teaching modality at some point? That's what I do now. Yeah, I see you as a teacher. Oh. You're a good teacher, Ginger. Um, there are some changes coming up, though, and it does involve this particular um, industry, so it feels like, do I stay here? Do you work with little kids, Ginger? Yes, I do. Yeah, because I see little kids around you. There's going to be something like a change, a change. Do I go to this grade? Do I stay here? There's something coming up. It still feels within the particular field that you're um, uh, in, so that part feels good. You're on the right path that way. Okay. Um, and the other thing is there's a change coming up around you as far as wherever you live right now, there's going to be a move within the next two years. So take that green sofa that you're sitting on with you. That, that feels like good luck. Okay. Um, did you have a quick question that you wanted to ask? Um, is there just anybody that's wanting to send me a message or anything? Can you say that one more? She wants to know if there's anybody out there that would like to send her a message besides fake Grandpa Bob. Fake Grandpa Bob. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Actually, there is. There's a young man coming in. Who's the Tom connection to you? Who's the strong T, Tom? A Tom? Mm-hmm. Um, there's a young guy coming in. He's a peer of yours, and he's saying the name Tom. I don't know. Let me ask you this question, too, because he's talking something about bus stops. There's about you, About bus stops? Do you take the train or the bus stop or the subway? Um... My house is next to a train track. Okay, that's what he's getting me to go to. There's something you need to be careful of, he's saying, securitizing, your, securitizing yourself when you leave and you walk out the door. So securitize the area, maybe get some pepper spray or something. He's just making me feel caution, caution. You need to look more around you. It seems like you need to be a little bit more um, aware, a little bit more cognizant. Okay. Um, and for some strange reason, I don't want you to go near the train tracks. Um, are they real close by? Because they feel like they're one house over. Yeah, because I feel real close like I want to go. And, okay. Um, you need to be really careful, like, if you can avoid going that way. There's something kind of strange, the energy. So Okay. That might also explain why you're going to be moving soon, too. Okay. You know, but, I mean, I don't see anything physically happening to you, but I do feel like something creepy. So okay. just keep your eyes and ears open. Something doesn't feel right. Also, make sure your windows are really securitized. Okay. You should get, like, an alarm system, too. I just feel like that's your message. You need to be a little bit more secure, a little bit more. Okay. Securitized. Also, you got a little bit of a lucky streak coming your way, too. Fourteen's a good number for you. What number? Fourteen. Fourteen? Mm hmm Okay. And um, what's up with the dark hair? Were you thinking of going with dark hair? Why do I have dark hair with you? Well, I have, um, like, a lightish medium brown color, but I was actually thinking about dyeing it. Yeah, he's saying about changing hair color, and I'm feeling dark hair, so I just had it in reverse. Um, thumbs up if you decide to do it. It'll make your eyes pop out okay. color-wise. So anyways. All right, great. All right. Well, thank you very much, Ginger. We appreciate you being part of tonight's show. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. 
Now, you've got, uh, we mentioned in the other show that you were part of, which was called Possessed Possessions, and I'm sure they probably rerun that a couple times uh, during the year. Can you tell us a little bit about that, Karen? Is there, if, if people are buying items from uh, estate sales or auctions, is there, are there things they should kind of keep an eye out for or, or any recommendation you can give so they're not bringing home the bad juju? <laughs> it's a good way of putting it. Uh, well, I'll tell you, it's funny you should say that every item has, as I tell, um, spiritual imprinted DNA on it. So every tip, you know, every item that you touch, you leave a little bit of yourself on it and vice versa. Um, one of the things that you might want to do if you're picking up antiques is do a, um, a cleansing of sorts, which you can use salt. Sea salt is good. You can also do smudging. And what you want to do is just to dissipate the energy that you leave behind, you know, your fingerprints, spiritual fingerprints, because every little thing you come in contact, you leave. And again, it's like spiritual DNA. And that includes, you know, your mood, your thoughts, your feelings, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'll tell you, it's, um, I had a package sent to me recently. And when I went to pick it up, it was an uh, overnight package. Put my hand in. And the minute I picked it up, I felt completely nauseous. And I realized who had ever transported this particular item was sick with a flu bug. And it's exactly what it turned out to be. And this, I was doing some work on it. But anytime you get anything that has, um, you know, that isn't completely new, you want to clean it just to get rid of some of that energy. Now, for those of us that aren't real familiar with cleaning, I mean, you said use sea salt or smudging. What is sea salt and how do you use it? Um, I mean, I know what sea salt is, but... (laughs) (laughs) What you'd want to do is put sea salt around it or maybe lay it in sea salt, like on a bed of sea salt that's in sea salt. Um, It starts, you know, it will start to dissipate some of that energy. Um, And you can also do it with a smudging stick, which you'd get at a New Age or mystical um, store of sorts, and you would light that and then just kind of wave the uh, essence around it. And what it does is it breaks up the vibrational patterns that are already set within that particular item. If you sense that you're, you're having strange things occur at home that never happened before, is it kind of a good idea to, to think about what you might have just bought? Uh, you know, if you picked up something old from a relative or, or, or from a garage sale or something like that, would that maybe help and then maybe remove it from the house for a time to see if things go back to normal? Um, you can do that, although I would always recommend smudging. So if you had a mirror and you put it up on the wall, you'd want to smudge that particular area. My kids smudge my mirrors all the time. <laughs> or oh, we're talking about with the smudge stick. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> exactly. You know, you can get holy water, too. And actually, you can create your own holy water by invoking a prayer. You know, because, again, it's all about the intention. And since we all carry the God source in all of us, we have the power within to execute that um, particular intention to dissipate, you know, naughty energy. I think Dave's used the holy water on the kids, too, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. <laughs> I try, but it doesn't work. What else do you have coming up, Karen? Anything else we can talk about for you? Um, shows. I'm um, working on another couple, uh, a couple other uh, things that we're doing right now, um, which they're just starting, you know, they're at the infancy stages. I've got a sequel to the book already um, in, you know, writing, um, which will be, you know, is your first book available right now? Um, not at the moment. It will okay. be coming out. I'm expecting it right around summertime. Okay. And it's pretty funny stories. Maybe we can have you back on when the book comes out and talk about it. We can get you to give a couple of issues away, autographed, and we'll uh, give them to the listeners. Sure. That'd be great. I'd love to. And you have X-Ops. Watch the Discovery Channel for X. Ops. That's X dash O P S. And if you have any questions for Karen Reese uh, after listening to the show tonight, you'd like to contact her for readings or help or spiritual contact, you can reach Karen by going to her website at KarenReese.com. And that's all one word K A R Y N R E E C E. Dot com. And Karen will be happy to answer your questions there. There's lists of information about her upcoming appearances, shows, uh, probably about her book as soon as it's available as well. Is that right? That's absolutely correct. Great. Well, you Karen, must be psychic, no? I, I try. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. I appreciate you coming on the show with us this evening, Karen. Oh, thank you so much. I hope that we can have you back with us sometime in the future here. Please do keep in touch and uh, be a friend of the show. Feel free to check out our website as well at darknessradio.com. Go to the discussion board. I think there might be people there that might have questions for you that you might be able to help them out with from time to time as well. I truly enjoyed my time, and I'll talk to you both in the near future. Great. Well, thank you very much, Karen. Thanks. Bye-bye. You're li- <laughs> Bye-bye. You're listening to The Darkness on the Edge of Town, Paranormal Radio Show. That was Karen Reese, our special guest this evening. She's a medium and a psychic. If you have an interest in contacting Karen, you can go to her website at karenreese.com. Give out uh, all the information there about what she does and her readings made available to you. I thank you very much for listening. We'll be back in a short bit. Stick to us here. You're listening to The Darkness on the Edge of Town.